Hello guys and welcome back to another video and today we're looking at a scenario where China was never a superpower. So I've done this with the US but now here we have it with China. First I'm going to take a quick look at what's changed. First things first, Japanese war devastated the Chinese even more. Pretty simple but just it was already an incredibly devastating war, why not make, why not make it worse? Second of all, right after that, right after World War II, China fails to reunite the all Chinese lands, Tibet, Xinjiang, Yunnan, and Manchuria are also independent. Uh, and the Chinese Civil War ends in a stalemate long before the Democrats flee to Taiwan. So now China's split between the Northern Communists and the Southern Democrats. With this, obviously, China's influence has sliced. It's now a third per for each of these, the North Chinese and the Southern Chinese. And both of them kind of say that they're the real China and claim all of this land, yeah, literally just all of it. But most people do not recognize that claim. Most people just recognize the claim on the Northern or Southern Chinese. Of course, for alliances here, there is a Northern Chinese Russian alliance and a Southern Chinese United alliance with the United States. Which one of these is more powerful? You can decide that yourself. I'd honestly say that the Russians have taken a big hit here. China, despite maybe not backing them on everything, is still their ally, especially with their common enemy of the US, but with over half of China now gone, over half of the communist Chinese's power now gone, I don't know how much longer they're gonna last. Still, let's go ahead and start the scenario with the first thing that's gonna happen, Russia. Russia is suffering. They rely heavily on Chinese exports and imports at this point, with all of the West just completely embargoing them. They still have like Indian, Pakistanian, Middle Eastern, but the West is gone and more and more countries are just cutting off ties with Russia or loosening them. In this world, China, Russia is still going to invade uh, Ukraine. We're going to assume that absolutely nothing changes except for the Chinese having a very different past. I did section this off around World War II, where things just turn out a bit differently. They do not reintegrate, and they do not, and the communists don't manage to push the Democrats off the continent, along with, as I said, a few warlords and a few just a bit more regular countries that a lot of people add, such as Tibet, Xinjiang, etc., still existing. So it's the first thing we're going to do here. Well, China is, of course, still going to try and consolidate power, so although I did weaken them, Let's go ahead and make just a few of them a bit more powerful. Starting with the Southern Chinese who are gonna annex Yunnan, because honestly, I don't know why I even added them here, pretty much just to weaken them even further. Still, they, were, they will soon be integrated. As for the Northern Chinese, well, they want, they want Xinjiang. They want Xinjiang bad. Sadly for them, Xinjiang instantly made an alliance with Russia, which you'd think they make an alliance with the West, but Sadly for the West, the second rebellion in Xinjiang changed their government to a pro-Russian one. China doesn't want to anger Russia. As for Tibet, they're good friends with India, and they have an alliance together along with Bhutan. Uh, Bhutan and India don't have a real alliance, but India's protecting Bhutan. That would be a similar thing with Tibet. Someone invades Tibet, India sees it as a declaration of war. Also, Pakistan is pretty cut off here. They do not border the Chinese directly, so... That's gonna hurt them. India's a whole lot more threatening when you don't have a Chinese ally to back you up. And, I mean, they can move things through Xinjiang. As I said, they are allies. But even just with Russia weakened, Pakistan's position is also heavily weakened. Which means they spend more money on their army, which means less money for industrialization, which is already a problem. Along with a few... Th a multitude of other things. Well, India still puts about the same amount of money into their army, but their industry is growing much more rapidly. May not be good for you in a second, Pakistan, but for now, let's look at some other events. Uh, I also set Korea for, to South Korea annexing the North. During the Korean War, China was the main factor that the West was pushed back to the border, and here, that would not have happened. We also see this being much stronger than a united Korea would be in our, in our world if they united today in 2023. Because North Korea is a lot poorer than the South. Yes, they'll bring in some useful things, but in this scenario, the entirety of Korea industrialized, not just the South. So the North is about as rich as the South is today, which makes this twice as powerful as the South is today, South Korea. 
very powerful country, although they may not militarize as much as they no longer have a massive threat on their border, and Manchuria is neutral as, once again, the Russians tried to make an, a rebellion in the country to join them, but that failed miserably. What are we going to do from here? Well, enough talk about China. What's going on in the world? Well, the U.S. is having a much easier time, with now half of China allied with them and their enemy of China weakened, their main competitor on the world stage is gone. So USA is gonna have a bit more fun. What's this first kind of fun gonna be? Well, you know how they <clears throat> liberated Iraq a few years ago? Actually, quite a few years ago, many, many years ago. But yeah, and how they attempted to do this same thing with Afghanistan. Well, now they have some allies in the, re allies in the region that want Iran dead. Turkey and Saudi Arabia. So then with the backing of the United States to declare war in Iran, and this could spark a miniature uh, World War III, which would most likely end in global death. But Russia here, who does not have the best stance, the best position, we're also gonna be assuming that nukes don't exist in this world because with nukes, well, everyone just dies. Everyone's just gonna die. We also see the U.S. pulling another uh, Iraq and declaring war on them, which leads Kuwait into joining. What's this going to do? Well, it's just going to open up a much larger front. With that, Syria gets dragged into this with a bit of the north with some pro-Turkish rebels, and the rest of this being pro-Russian, which is going to join the blue team. Well, let's go ahead and continue this war as the red team is going to begin to push out from Turkey into Syria and into Iraq. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait are going to push into Yemen, into Iraq. Yemen also gets dragged into this, pretty much just by Saudi Arabia, who wants to get rid of this just terrible area to live in right off their border. It's going to expand a bit more with Jordan deciding to join the red team. Lebanon, I'll keep them neutral for now because I normally put them on the blue team with Iran, but here I don't really know what side they pick. But Israel's definitely on the red team, and Palestine on the blue team. From there, the rest of the Arabian countries will join on the red team, and Azerbaijan and Armenia will join. Bit of a Middle Eastern war here, except last time I didn't allow any country backing. This time the US officially joins into the war. Not on the blue team, that was on the red team. Russia considers joining in, but instead just sends their support to uh, the blue team, and does not officially join in. That's what this color is going to be. But if you're really going to look at support, then the red team has got pretty much all of Europe on their side, supplying them along with Canada, China, Japan, Korea, Australia. Yeah, Russia's going to try and supply the blue team, but what can they really do against the entirety of the West? Not a lot, especially when their economy is already kind of struggling. So what are they gonna do from here? Well, the war is gonna drag on a tiny bit longer, but honestly, Iran, their situation's just getting worse in this world. And the US is incredibly emboldened. Without nuclear weapons, the USA knows it would win in a world war. So it's willing to do things like this to shut down, I guess, anti-US governments. Although they are still using the excuses about freeing the people and definitely not just trying to get access to their oil fields or anything like that. Of course not. From their mainly American landing, lands conveniently near all the oil fields and captures them all and <clears throat> seizes them for the good of the Iranian people. Good job, US. You've done it again. Making up excuses for why to take everyone else's oil. Well, from there, Iraq just falls. I've slowly been doing that. Oh, Yemen fell like 10 years ago. And now it's just Iran. They're gonna try and hold down their mountains, but what can they really do? The US and Saudi Arabian combined force is pushing down their coastline and their people who are now finally starting to get exposed to what this war is really like and what's really happening are starting to get a bit angry. So a new pro-American government rises up in Iran. This is not the most powerful rebellion, just a few people who decided to start an uprising. But soon enough, the red team connects up with them and begins to supply them heavily. And I, when I say supply them, I mean, like, most of these guys' guns are American now. With that, they start getting much more, like, support, and they capture the Iranian capital. From here, Iran knows it's screwed. 
they're just gonna have to accept that and the country is split between the pro-americans and just the americans themselves of course some border concessions are going to be made although it is going to be a bit more minor than i normally make it the turks are going to get off the syrian coast and a bit of land into the north of the country they're also going to get a bit of northern iraq and a bit of land out of iran but overall it's nothing too crazy it's still going to hurt these guys very much from there Armenia has turned into a micro-state, pretty much. Honestly, at this point, they're just a Turkish puppet. I don't even know if they'd want to live. Azerbaijan gets a whole lot of land out of northern Iran. Uh, Iraq, I mean, Kuwait gets a bit of land out of everybody. More oil. Yay, Kuwait, go. Yemen is split between Saudi Arabia and Oman, but Saudi Arabia gets the majority of it. As, well, they did the majority of the work. From, the, from there, Saudi Arabia is also given some minor concessions along the Iraqi border to meet up with Kuwait. Same thing with Jordan, minor concessions from the losers. And for Israel, just recognition of the Golden Heights and a tiny bit of land concessions along with recognition. Uh, basically, just the Arab countries recognizing that Israel now controls Palestine. As for the rest of this land, well, it's going to be given back to this new Iranian government. And conveniently enough, a demilitarized American protected zone is going to be set up around where all the oil fields are. Hmm, convenient how that works. So for the next 25 years, a protectorate is made here in Iran, which is basically, I mean, the U.S. says that it's to... Uh, stop Iranian remilitarization until the government can maintain control of the rest of the country, but it's just the Americans getting land. As for Iraq and Syria, well, they don't have much of a choice in uniting, and this is now a, eh, just a pro-Western government put into place. It's not a puppet government of anyone's, but that's just because Turkey wanted it to be their puppet, the USA wanted another puppet for themselves, and Saudi Arabia wanted their own puppet. So guess what? Nobody gets it. So the rest of this land, we can color it out and look at these new borders. So yeah, the USA feeling a bit emboldened here, and Russia's gonna decide that if the USA gets to expand, so do they. Basically, Russia's just trying to prove that they can still be a global superpower too, and that not only the US gets involved in these global affairs. How's this gonna go for them? Well, you're about to find out as soon as I finish coloring this in. Turkey also, like these borders, just push them down a bit. Turkey, don't even know if they want that land out of Syria, incredibly unstable, probably gonna hurt your country, but it's land and Turkey's gonna take it. Turkey's gonna want it and Turkey's gonna get it. As for Azerbaijan, Shouldn't be too difficult. Obviously, I don't know perfect, uh, like, just ethnicities in northern Iran because it's complicated and you can't learn it for every country, but I know there are quite a few people who may consider themselves Azerbaijani in the region. So that should be fun for you. Jordan, yeah, you don't get much important land. Nothing too important as far as I know. Maybe a city or two that have some regional importance. But overall, no major land concessions are made. Same thing with Israel. So here we now have our Middle East. A lot more Americanized. As part of the deal was that the USA would gain access to oil fields, who would have guessed? And that Saudi Arabia would sign a bit of a defensive pact with the United States and Turkey. The Middle Eastern Defense Committee, which includes the US for some reason, because why wouldn't it? And it's signed between all participating countries, and more are likely to join soon. So just, yeah, the entire Middle East and the United States who pledges to protect the region from any further instability. Or at least that's what they say. Although, I mean, the U.S. does kind of want to keep the region in check for the future. From there, let's look to Russia. Because, as I said, Russia's a bit pissed about the U.S. expanding. What do they do? Well, they begin to expand themselves. First off, they annex Kazakhstan because they can. Next up, they decide, uh, 
China's dying and I haven't talked about them, even though this video centered around them capitulating. So how is that gonna go? It's gonna go about how you'd expect it to. Russia's just gonna boop, boop, boop. They're gonna decide that China's no longer important and that they must grow their own power. So they take over Manchuria, Mongolia, and Xinjiang. From there, they annex the rest of Central Asia, invade Georgia, and annex Belarus. Basically, Russia's just trying to get as big as they can, as fast as they can to rival the US. Sadly for them, they somehow didn't realize that expanding this much is just gonna cause more political instability, and that they're slowly picking off all of the allies that they could even count on. So yeah, Russia doing their best to expand, and with China heavily weakened, they're still a world player, but much less so. Whilst Russia decides to discard their interests to try and keep Russia, I guess, alive, although that may not last very long. As in the process of trying to expand, they have screwed themselves in to, for the future, as they now have, well, as I said, zero allies and a lot more people in them who don't want to be in them. That's never good to have, but hey, Russia, I mean, I guess you're bigger. Is this the biggest they've ever been? Uh, Russian Empire versus this. Maybe, because I don't think they ever controlled so much land in China. They also control Central Asia again. So this is quite the powerful country, but once again, instability is most likely going to destroy them. Yeah, it is quite the large country. By far the largest in the world currently, as the United States has not actually expanded, just expanded their influence. That's enough talking about Russia. Now I can go ahead and color them out. But they are definitely attempting their best to expand. At this point, they are too slow to invade Ukraine. Actually, no, they're not too slow to invade Ukraine, and they do so. So whilst the US is busy in the Middle East, Russia has been vastly expanding their territories. Once again, Russia, this may look good for you in the short term, but in the long term, this is going to get you killed. To go ahead and see how that works, well, let's look, take a look at the Russian alliance. Russia and Northern China. And maybe Pakistan. And maybe Serbia. And that's about it. Maybe Venezuela and Cuba would join. The point is, they've just, yeah, Russia, this is not going to go well for you. How is it not going to go well? Well, Russia, as I said, is feeling very emboldened. So what are they going to do? They're going to say the US gets to invade Iran, I get to invade Iran. And Iran's in a pact with all of the Middle East. And the Middle East is in a pact with the US. And although they technically don't have to, Russia de then declares war on the US and makes it official. And since, since it is a declaration of war from Russia on the US, now NATO's involved. And as for the rest of the world, well, they've been making alliances too. Uh, the US, as I said, spread their influence much larger this time. So Japan, of course, joins in, as does Korea. Uh, I mean, Russia's gonna call upon their allies, but that's not gonna do very much. All that's gonna do is really give the blue team more land once the war's over. As for the rest of the world, well, they're all going to decide that they are done putting up with Russia. They are done allowing them to expand just because they think the U.S. is doing it so they get to. So what are they going to do? Well, they're all going to join in solely to mess up Russia. The USA has a lot of allies that may not be as major as some of their European ones, but in this world they are a considerable, considerably more U.S.-aligned as there's... I mean, Russia's the other main power in the world. Technically, modern day, they have a stronger military than China. But in a war, I'm pretty sure it's obvious that China would win if it was a 1v1. So the rest of Europe's joining the blue team. Obviously, not Russia itself. But you'll see what I was saying about the Russians not liking this. Even Lebanon's gonna join in, as they're gonna join the Middle Eastern Pact. And the rest of the Middle East is also going to get involved. Wow, Russia, you've really done it this time, huh? You have somehow managed to get yourself killed whilst trying to expand your borders. And you've went from a 
decently powerful world country to a massive country fighting the largest alliance on the planet. How's this gonna go for Russia? Well, I'm gonna make it a bit quicker since this video is already getting long. And that's just gonna be bad. Let's finish coloring in these countries. Of course, South China will join in. And Tibet and India, who have now cut off relations with China, seeing how just bad they're doing and wanting to kill Pakistan and North China, join in. This war is already not looking good for you, Russia. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to be all competent and Russian and start to push into Iran and down to Azerbaijan and Turkey. You're quickly going to get stopped, and now it's the blue team's turn. Going to capture Serbia, Kaliningrad, and begin to push into Ukraine. Meanwhile, the Indians are going to begin to push into Pakistan, into China, and the southern Chinese are going to push into the northern Chinese, whilst the Koreans and J Japanese begin to push into Russia. And now comes that issue that I was talking about. You take over too much land, it all rebels against you. Blue team hands Ukraine back over its territory. So that's one rebellion. As for rebellion two, it's gonna be a Central Asian rebellion. It's just gonna be these people saying, I don't wanna be a part of Russia anymore, they're oppressive. And my government may have done that before, but at least my government was made of my people. Then the Mongolians are gonna say, just, just no, they're just gonna leave. They ask Russia if they can leave the Union. Russia says no, so they rebel. And one of the most, most important ones, Manchuria, also rebels against the Russians and takes a lot of the Russian East with them. As for Russia itself, well, that's not gonna look much better in a second, as Russia itself is having some issues with a lot of people seeing all these rebellions and deciding that either you secede now or you never secede. Who's going to decide to secede? Well, in a real world, everybody. But here, we're, ju we're just going to see a massive Russian rebellion break out, calling for reforms in the government. They control a lot of Siberia and a good amount of important land to the west of the Urals. I'm not going to show this entire war because we all know how it's going to play out. We all know how it's going to end. It's going to end in a Western victory. And, I mean, I can't tell you if this is exactly what would happen if China was never a superpower, but without them, Russia is a lot worse off. Don't even know if they would survive. This is also assuming that there are no nukes, because if there were, then this map would not look like this. It would also not look in a Russian victory, it would just be everyone dead, and nobody left to have to call victory. And even if they did, I don't think anyone, like, it's just, this is not a victory. Well, it wouldn't be if nukes had been used, but luckily for these people, nukes weren't used. As for all of these rebellions, well, they've each expanded a considerable amount into previous own lands by them, and some expanding even further, such as the Mongolians, and in certain areas, even the Central Asians. Also, I didn't have a Xinjiang rebel, but they did as well because why wouldn't they? As for the rest of Russia, well, it's just fell to the rebellion. So yeah, Russia's gone now. Uh, let's go and look at this peace treaty. I'm just gonna color everything in white so we can see it more clearly. And you can just see what is gonna be done to the Russians. Basically, everyone in them who wants independence gets it, and everyone else is given a new democratic western government for the russians originally this is going to be bad but hey maybe maybe eventually it can be decent for you poland's going to get back some of their old lands oh i wish can i just give them the land out of lithuania that they need and out of latvia so that we can reform the old polish borders oh those borders are so nice but sadly for us we're not going to do that because Poland didn't defeat Lithuania. In fact, Lithuania is going to get some land of their own. Decent amount of land considering they did nothing, but hey, why not? The Latvians are also going to get a good amount of land, as are the Estonians, as they're going to push all the way up to St. Petersburg. Finns are going to do the same to just be like a couple miles away from the city. With that, if war ever breaks out again, the Russians, one of their largest and most important cities, is right on the doorstep of the Americans. 
from here, uh, I was gonna give this to like Hungary or Slovakia or somebody, but I think I'll just give Romania all of Moldova and some parts of southern Ukraine. From there, Ukraine itself will gain independence, gain some lands in certain areas, and lose some lands in certain areas. It's definitely lost in some mm, some parts, but it has gained some land near the Black Sea. So they're they're fine. They're going. They're going and they're going hard. Anyways, I'm pretty sure they're just happy they got their independence back and that they were able to beat up the Russians a bit. Uh, from that, that's pretty much all Europeans' borders done, except for the new Belarus Belarusian state set up in the north of Ukraine. Just another American puppet. From there, Turkey's expanded. As Georgia got a referendum, and although it may or may not have been rigged, they joined Turkey. Same thing with Azerbaijan, they're gonna push up north a bit. See, so yeah, honestly, real winner here is Azerbaijan. They're probably also gonna annex Armenia in the peace treaty. Why? Because they can. Iran is also gonna get land. Even though they recently lost the war, they are now part of the US, or at least they're now friends with the US, so they get land. Not as much out of Pakistan though. India requests full control of Pakistan, but a lot of the Western countries decide that Pakistan would literally just rebel against the Indians. The people there definitely don't want to be ruled by some Indian guy, so they would most likely rebel against them. And the West knows this while India just wants to kill Pakistan. So India requests it, and the West decides to give them a bunch of land, but not everything that they asked for. A lot of land in Kashmir, but not the land that they wanted out of Tibet, because Tibet is their ally, and Pakistan still exists. As for Central Asia, where it's, well, it's going to get some form of government back. Uh, they're all just together now. So call that good, call that bad, call it whatever you want. But Central Asia is now united. As for Xinjiang, well, since they did willingly join the Russians, and didn't rebel against them in the Russian Civil War. They have lost some land from all of this, but they're still given independence as the US wants everyone independent. As for the Mongolians, well, they set up a super state, meeting up with like Baikal and moving down from there. They're still landlocked, but they are now one of the largest countries and they have also come out very much on top. Same thing with the Manchurians expanding into Russia. As for China, well, China's back, baby. They reunite the North and the South and form up just China. From there, I might give Korea some land, but I think we're good with that. And that's about all the border changes. Oh no, wait, my bad. Russia split in two, the greater Siberian realm and the European part, which is also stretching into Asia because, well, nobody really wanted. Siberia is just another puppet to get um, uh, like resources, oil, natural gases, etc. for the Europeans who suffered a lot during this war due to lack of resources. Basically, the Americans' way of paying back all those countries, uh, UK, France, Germany, etc. Poland was paid back with land. But a lot of these countries did a lot in the war effort and didn't get any land. So they were given uh, basically just resource, resource rights throughout all of Russia. Which is very good for them. Alright, let's finish this up. Video's getting long and I'm getting tired of talking. There we go. Finland. Once again, I always love giving Finland these borders. They are just... Mwah. Yes, please, Finland, get these borders. Uh, you know, if World War Three breaks out, I think the thing, I think that the thing I'm most excited about is that Finland gets this land. Obviously, everyone's probably gonna die by then. But if there ever is a peace treaty, then I hope Finland gets that land. As for Azerbaijan, yeah, I'm gonna give them Armenia. Armenia is weak, and Turkey wanted them to have it. Turkey and Azerbaijan might unite, maybe even Central Asia to form the Turkic Confederacy. But Central Asia is growing distant from Turkey, honestly. Their relations in real life aren't amazing. And here, they've just barely interacted. And now, just because of some ancient history about the Turks coming in, 
they're supposed to unite. Yeah, Central Asia, just after winning their freedom, I don't think they want to be taken over by another stronger power, at least for a while. Azerbaijan, though, very near future, uniting with Turkey. So yeah, this has just turned into another kind of World War III scenario, I want to say. Just that, without China on Russia's side, making it a far easier Western victory. I do have them set to win World War III if it breaks out without nukes, but as I said, everyone's just going to die, so nobody's truly going to come out on top. India, big. Pakistan, their puppet. Pakistan, you're going to get all of Afghanistan. India says it's to stabilize the destable, the de not stable, uh, Pakistan. But everyone knows that Afghanistan is not stable at all. India really just did this as a practical joke to make Pakistan larger, but more unstable. A uh, ploy to get the land in the future? Probably not, but hey, Indians aren't dumb. I'm sure they have something planned. From there, as I said, China has reunited and is now a growing world power. I doubt they'll ever overtake the US, maybe eventually, but they have still definitely been weakened from their stance uh, in modern day in the world. Losing uh, Manchuria, a lot of land to Mongolia, Xinjiang, Tibet, etc, etc. Alright, Japan also gets all these islands because Manchuria, I mean, I guess they might care, but you know what? It's Japanese now. I'm pretty sure I've gotten all the borders in, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time. Bye!